Stephen Alson, full time Devils. Manchester United 1, FC Midland 2. Um, I'm not, I don't, where do you begin on this? Um, there was a lot of factors going into play for the result to be what the result was. We had chances early on in the game that we didn't take. We slipped over a lot in the final third. Um, we did we did actually create things um, early on in the game that we didn't put away. And we were hit on the counter um, several times. The reasoning for that, perhaps it was our eagerness to score. Perhaps it was our um, inexperience at the back. Um, I've, all, I've often said, I love seeing the youth come through. Everybody knows I'm a big uh, advocate of our academy. And I'm also one that says there has to be the right time to play the academy, lads. And when the team's devoid of confidence and uh, under pressure to the level that we are, that is not the right time to blood the academy. And the problem that we've had is that we've had no, no other alternative because of the mismanagement of the squad, because we've got so many off the wage bill, and because we ended up with um, such a... just a decimated squad in terms of numbers with how difficult the Premier League is and European competition, whether that's Champions League or Europa League, we let a lot go in the summer, uh, which I thought was a mistake. The, the last couple of weeks of the, the window where we allowed so many to leave felt like we was about to bring in something massive and it didn't happen. And then we thought, thought slash hoped that the January transfer window would be an opportunity to rectify that. And we didn't rectify that in January. And... You wonder why. Now the manager's going to come out and say, I'm happy with the squad and this, that and the other, because otherwise that's putting undue pressure on the side. If he says things like, oh, yeah, I wanted another four players, well, that's going to make the lads who are currently in the squad feel daft. And I've often said as well, don't listen to anything that the manager says in a press conference because there's always an agenda with it. I don't think he could have possibly been happy because there wasn't any of the fans that was happy. And I... I know maybe he occasionally sees things different to us, but I don't think it's that different to us. So we've been forced to play a load of academy lads tonight. The, the number of injuries that we've got is bad, but it's not something that's unexpected. If you look at United's injury record for the last 10 years, probably. I remember playing um, Champions League game, I think it was Wolfsburg, with... Three midfielders and one defender in defence. I think Paddy Evra was our only a defender in defence that night. Uh, we actually went on to win the game. But this has happened numerous times before. So why you would allow yourself to go into a into the start of a season, knowing that this is likely to happen with the, the injury prone squad that we have, is is mental. Is this a symptom? Of Glazer ownership. Is this a symptom of the cost cutting exercise. That's down to the Glazers. I tell you what. It is down to the Glazers. And something that they can rectify. Is the appointment of a director of football. To help the manager. Louis van Gaal's reign. As Manchester United manager. Is all but over. Isn't it? Let's face it. There's, there's absolutely no way. This can be turned around at the moment. In terms of fan opinion. In terms of player confidence, in terms of results on the pitch, without pulling out cliches, the players have stopped playing for him, or they've stopped playing for themselves. The writing's on the wall. I've seen people tonight saying this was reminiscent of the Olympiacos game in um, in Piraeus, um, which was the turning point for me under David Moyes, where I was like, this is just not going to work. We didn't have the same mitigating factors that we've got tonight under Moyes at that time. But the writing is still very much on the wall for Louis van Gaal. I'm amazed that he's still in a job. The, the, st the stats alone, is it 9 in 27 wins? 9 wins in 27 games is, is inexcusable. There are mitigating circumstances for every single game. Uh, and you can defend every single loss. You can blame luck on a couple of games. 
But when you chunk it out to almost 30 matches and you win a third of them, that's just not good enough. And it's never going to be good enough, regardless of the circumstances. And ultimately, the management have to uh, pay the price for that because you're not going to sack 22, 24, 25 players. The manager is the easiest one to replace. Now, I do think a lot more emphasis than is correct is placed on the guy who picks the team. Um, I, I think there is more emphasis to be placed on the players. I think there's more emphasis to be placed on the directors and the board. Um, we are a club, not just one team. And what we do as a club is reflected in how that first team performs. And I think we are underperforming as a club at the moment, on and off the field. And I think if we sacked Lou Van Gaal tomorrow, which is likely, let's face it, or even if we just give him to the end of the season to ride this out and he's replaced by the worst kept secret in the world with Jose Mourinho, there's still more to be done to turn this ship around. You're not just going to go, you out, you in. And we'll, we'll suddenly start playing attractive football and we'll suddenly just sweep all before us. The problems are greater than that. This team is not as good as we think it is, for one. The club has got hierarchical, hierarchical problems, for two. We need a director of football. We need some sort of direction. Then, there might be the direction, but it doesn't feel like there's the direction, does it? Do you know what I mean? It, by... By that, it means that we feel reactionary rather than like we're planning stuff. I don't know if I'm worried or not, or if I'm just sort of feeling a little empty with us at the moment. It's hard to get too excited or too upset over anything that happens at the club at the moment because we can see it coming. Um, going into this game tonight, we didn't know what, Midgeland was going to offer the two months that they haven't played a competitive game for as I said in the preview could be a gift or a curse they could either be fresh or they could be lacking that um, competitive edge they were fresh they were up for it as their chairman's been saying all week this is their cup final and they played like it um, we should be beating teams like that but at the moment we're going through a a bad bad phase how we fix it I don't know I do think it starts with um, changing the manager because that is going to have the biggest impact on the team but we've got to sign some new players there's still um, there's still too many squad players occupying first team places now people always go to the, uh, the two extremes of everything when they're generally the truth does lie somewhere in the middle um I'm a big fan of the likes of Lingard and youth players that are coming through. That doesn't mean that I want to see him starting over the likes of Gareth Bale. There's quite clearly better footballers in world football than are those occupying World Eleven slots for us at the moment. And I don't want to pick on Lingard because there were some gutless performances all over the pitch tonight. Inexperience showed from a couple. Um... There was mistakes from senior pros that you just don't expect. There was an overall lack of leadership, but I do think it is worth mentioning that Romero played out of his skin, considering the guy's been sat on the bench for so long and only been playing under-21 football. Coming from a World Cup final to playing under-21 football must be hard to get up for when he's come straight into the first team and looked like he's not skipped a beat. That there probably proving that the rest that Midgieland has been or can be um, very beneficial for somebody going into a match. His concentration was perfect. Pulled out some excellent saves. Probably the only bright spark in tonight's performance, if I'm honest. Rooney now out for two months. The opportunity is there for some of these young lads to step up. We've got a phenomenal side in terms of um, potential and youth. It needs a little bit of um, a polish with a couple of genuine world-class senior pros to guide us and I think we'll be fine I don't think we're in danger of falling into that Liverpool not going to win a title for a quarter of a century or more sort of trap I think we're far too good for that but we do need to start changing some stuff and we do need to put some stuff in place to safeguard that I also think we we earn far too much money um, which sadly is a factor um, 
I think that the money factor for us is something that's going to guarantee that we remain successful uh, despite the increased competition that there now is across the Premier League. <sighs> flat. <laughs> no other word for it, is it? Just absolutely flat. Listen, thank you for watching uh, and hope you enjoyed all the coverage from Full Time Devils and uh, the stuff we've managed to get for tonight. Despite the result, uh, we will be there Monday. Stick it in the comments what you thought about tonight's game. Stick it in the comments what you think we need to be doing to go forward. Uh, give the video a like. Subscribe if you don't already. We are aiming for 250,000 uh, as our next target in terms of subscribers. Oh well, it is what it is, isn't it? Counting them all. See you soon.